Metroid, one of Nintendo's biggest and longest lasting franchises, up there with Mario and Zelda. At nearly 35 years since its initial release, it begs the question, has the original NES Metroid aged well? No. The game isn't bad, I think it does a lot well, which is even more impressive considering its age. On a console as old as the NES, the atmosphere is still fantastic thanks to the soundtrack and graphics. I can't say for certain that I go, ah, yep, of course, I clearly know what that's <gasps> called. But all enemies are distinct enough that what are really just small clusters of pixels still stand out. And I love the idea of Metroid, a non-linear adventure where you explore, come across things that help you progress further, and so on. But the emphasis is on the idea of Metroid. Because while initially it feels like the game throws you a generous handful of confetti to congratulate you, the rest of it felt as if my face got caved in. Here were my two issues with Metroid. It was too unforgiving, and it was too cryptic. It makes sense, the ideology and game design was in transition from arcades to homes, so there's a correlation with a lot of this generation's games being ones that take your lives like it's nothing. But, and I sincerely mean this, fuck. It's not even so much that Metroid is tough, it's more the fact that when you respawn, you only have 30 HP, leaving your options as either grinding for drops tediously, or being good at games. However, I have low patience, and I mean, have you seen this level of gameplay? <laughs> Clearly, I wasn't the one at fault here. And here comes the second problem with Metroid. I had no idea where I needed to go after getting stuck. Not in a Metroidvania kind of way either, more in a nice suck and keep dying kind of way. The last straw was when I thought I had finally made some progress. I planted a bomb here and found a little entry. Oh my god, I figured it out! Though what I didn't realise was that it was a trap and Metroid suddenly became getting over it with Samus Aran. After several futile attempts to platform to no avail, I was done. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. I wanted to throw Metroid straight in the bin, but considering what I'm playing it on, I guess it's already in there. I'm sorry, that was a bit too far actually. And so at this point, I realized my goal to beat Metroid by itself was impossible. I needed Nintendo themselves to help me out. Thus, I decided to go online and buy the official Nintendo Strategy Guide... Instead found a sweet page on web.archive that had a PDF version of the guide. With that golden crest of an official Nintendo license, I knew this was the real deal. It doesn't have one, does it? Oh, for God's sake, Luke, you idiot! With that golden crest of an official Nintendo license, I knew this was the real deal. So, I'm going to be beating Metroid how Nintendo intended. Right away, the book does a good job priming you for the game before you even get into it, with an in-depth review, despite the fact this isn't a review. Well, there's a synopsis of the story, which is very integral to a game that has like one screen dedicated to it. The how to play section is actually not that? I mean, yeah, it's part of the game, but it's like if a tutorial was, hey, you have health and a password. Good luck, bitch. Thankfully, an extra section gives me some more solid advice to just farm for health like I didn't want to, so great. But pay attention, everyone. Page 53 says that these are the 10 items. Round ball, long beam, ice beam, bomb, high jump, varia suit, waver beam, screw attack, and like and subscribe. The most powerful duo of the 10. Page 54 then lists all the fun characters you'll encounter on your journey. The enemy from earlier, for example, that's a Garuta. And this enemy, what do you think it's called? Take a guess. <laughs> Just kidding. You obviously knew it was a Desk Giga. Duh. My favourite thing is when some enemies have got this pseudo-fictional alien name, and others are overly literal English. You've got the Squeeped, these are Zebatite, and this is the Sidehopper. It likes to sidehop. Right, okay, I'm getting distracted. Page 55 is actually pretty useful as it lays out a lot of the items in the first area of the game Brinstar, as well as what they are and what order to obtain them. That's pretty good as I was just meandering and not sure what to do when I was playing it blind, but for this stretch I had a lot more structure. On top of this smaller map, there's a double map detailing the whole area. This larger one at least has points of interest, for which pages 58 and 59 describe in detail. Some of them are admittedly pretty useless, so I won't go over all of them, but when they're relevant they'll be mentioned. Point 1 for example, if you get a round ball then you can go through the narrow passageway easily. Ah, thank god they had this in this book. I thought the game just ended here, personally, but no, there's a whole other part of it. That's crazy. The layout of the 9 items are pretty useful. I got everything in the intended order from the round ball to the bombs. Getting the missiles as your second item is the best choice, as when you look at point 4, 
you see a lot of items are hidden behind doors that can only be opened by five missiles. Then I learned from the double map that you're needed to drop the bomb in this area, not that one, the one that completely screwed me over. Going down here gets you the ice beam and lets you freeze enemies. Right, okay, back up to the top. Um, why can't I get back up? Ah, I see. You need a bomb to get into the area I got stuck in. Point three mentions you can drop bombs to access passageways, and I remember there was a little area here. Aha! Okay, let me just bomb my way through. Wait, it won't let me through. Um, wait, uh, let me check something. Oh, point three isn't marked where the item is. In fact, the guy doesn't give me any advice here. Am I stuck? Oh god, I'm panicking. Everybody panic. This isn't according to plan. The guy has lied to me. I've been made a fool. This is going to get me cancelled on Twitter.com. Climate change is going to kill us all! Oh, you can just damage boost. Now when I went to get the seventh item, some more missiles, you'll notice in this guide that the eighth item is just there, but you're at a dead end. You'll also see point five and six listed on the larger map, but unfortunately, I never learned how to read, so I went all the way around thinking that you needed to platform across frozen rippers, but after that failed miserably, I then learned the error of my ways. Point five highlights the exact spot I assumed was a dead end. As it turns out, there are some places where you can break down part of a dead end, yet I never thought to shoot up at the top of it as the screenshot proves. So after a bit of quick navigation back there, I learned that I am indeed very dumb. But you know what's really dumb? The ninth item. Because when you try and collect it, you'll learn that it's pretty much impossible to obtain. The guide at point 13 says to freeze away their enemy and use them as a platform, but I could not make it work at all. I instead just opted to use the high jump instead, so I left this for later and went to Norfair. For the first part of this area, I was a touch confused. Some dead ends had little passageways, but others were exactly what they looked like, dead ends. Following the guide, I couldn't really make sense of where to go to obtain the items I needed, as well as anywhere some items were too. I imagine it's more to do with the age of the guide than anything, but I was sure an enemy tank was here, when in reality it was way over there. And it went like that for a little while, until I took note of something not even that noteworthy, but as a last resort. This part of Norfair has a big vertical area, yet I couldn't find a way to access it. So I had a look at the floor to see if there was any inconsistency. And if you notice the pattern, there is. At this point here, which, lo and behold, is where you pass through. So although the guide didn't tell me this, it made me aware of the area, which, thanks to a discrepancy, made me figure out the way through. It was pretty sweet. There are some design features which I think are great in leading the player subconsciously, which is excellent for a game old enough to have a midlife crisis. This can sometimes make the guide unnecessary too. Point 7 and 9 for instance let you know that you can freeze enemies or bomb walls to get into other areas, but the game will often have enemies in a position to hint at this fact without you needing to check. Except, sometimes the game has this leading design, then basically says damn, imagine falling for that dumbass. But I digress. The area I'm now in allows me to get the high jump, which, following through this area courtesy of point 8, I'm able to grab the screw attack, and then later the wave beam. By this point, I was riding high. I immediately left Norfair to go and grab the Varia suit, which made me even more powerful, and now decided to face the two mandatory bosses at different hideouts. Ridley, possibly the most well-known enemy from Metroid, and some toad-looking thing called Kraid. I opted to go for Kraid's hideout first, and expected a pretty easy win. Like I mean, Come on, it's Kraid, and I'm ultra powerful now. No way I die here. Huh, despite having like, a bunch of health, I got absolutely bullied by this thing. The guy doesn't really help much either. It only states that it attacks from the front and the back, and that missiles are the best way to kill them. So, the same as every other enemy. Hang on, let me, let me rewrite this part. The best way to kill Kraid is shoot it a shit ton, and kill it before it kills you. There we go, a much better guide. Well, if Kraid is this rough, I can't imagine how difficult Ridley, arguably the series' most iconic villain, will be. Not only was its hideout generally rougher to traverse through, but the little section on Ridley makes it sound like you're going to be dodging a bunch of ranged fireballs while swimming through lava. I sure hope I can make it through. Oh, that's the fight with Ridley. The guy doesn't even mention this, but you can legitimately just stand in front of it and shoot it without getting hit. Why is this the boss everyone raves about and not Kraid? 
Why is it that Ridley hits the big time and not Craig shoots missiles from its back on occasion? Whatever, I'm done here, time for the final part. The guide shows me to head back to Brinstar to access this passageway that opens up once you defeat Craig and Ridley. And now, here it is, the final area of Metroid on NES. Full health with a bunch of missiles, it should be a cakewalk. Fuck, fuck, shit, fuck, fuck, shit. So one thing I may have missed was that the Metroid are actually impossible to hit unless they're frozen, thanks to point 15. So a quick detour to resorp out the wave beam for the ice beam, and now they're actually possible to kill. While what occurred about five seconds ago looked bad, funnily enough, when you have the ice beam, the Metroid are pretty straightforward. Even if you get caught, point 17 has you covered. You can just use bombs to push them off of you, and they always drop a bunch of energy or missiles, which I didn't factor in when I was dying rapidly. So they're not the hardest enemies in this area. Instead, the worst were these rings. Oh, sorry, rinkers. Fire rings that attack you constantly and endlessly respawn. I was going to have a real tough time with the final boss, but I was prepared to face it. But uh, I wasn't prepared to show it. So, funny thing, right? When I need to pause the game for whatever reason, I'll also pause my OBS recording to save space in storage. And every instance in my recording so far, I have no issue. Here's what the footage looks like for this one. Yeah, uh, I should have made sure to look at point 18. Don't be a fucking idiot. So, how did I fix this? I beat the whole game again. I didn't do everything perfectly, but in a single sitting I was able to beat Metroid again, and in a quicker run too, as well as with actual footage of me beating Mother Brain. Also, for the record, find a way to complain to Nintendo about Mother Brain. This is honestly one of the most frustrating bosses I've ever fought, and I'm not kidding. Attacks from every direction that put you off with no real means to defend yourself made this what I'd go as far as to say was the antithesis of fun. Once you break all the zebatites and get to Mother Brain, you can also end up stuck here where it's ridiculously difficult and annoying to break out of. I died quite a few times and said many a thing I will not repeat on video. But after looking at the guide and not getting a single idea what to do, I eventually came through with my own guide for this boss. The best tip I can give you is to hold out underneath the platform most of the time rather than trying to shoot at Mother Brain while simultaneously jugging all the rings. Oh fuck off, they're rings. So go in here, hop around a bunch, and then threeze them as they come towards you, before standing on the perch again until they defrost. It made the fight much less egregious, for me to eventually beat Mother Brain with health to spare. One last escape, and would you look at that? I've beaten Metroid on NES. I have to say, as far as guides go, I've definitely seen better, but it was a really solid foundation for a game that desperately needed it. And if you were to play Metroid yourself, please use one. However, even past my grievances of the game, I have a newfound respect after beating it, and it makes me even more excited that there are like a dozen more Metroid games to play. But for now, thanks to the official Nintendo guide, I'm one down and 13 to go. Yo, it's me, the video man. Uh, thank you so much for watching, if you got this far. The channel's been doing really well recently. I've had a bunch of lovely comments you're seeing down below, and we're at 50 subscribers now, which is mind-blowing. I'm hoping to get 100 as the next milestone, so like and subscribe if you did enjoy. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. Take care, stay safe.